Help support our coverage through Amazon Prime. Get free music with Prime Music, TV, movies, and documentaries with Prime Video, and free games with Prime Gaming. For this and a whole lot more, go to PlugHitsLive.com slash Prime. Well, our next guest is here. Hello. Hey, Scott. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? Great. Go ahead and introduce yourself for me. So I'm Alex Bersagian. I'm a CEO of a company called Robo Eats. Uh, North America. Uh, so I don't know if, how much you know about us, but let, if you don't mind just um, talking about Robo, it's, it's the world's most advanced autonomous robot kitchen. And at CES, we're introducing this robotic kitchen cart called ARC3. But let, let me kind of take you back. How it all started is the, the original founders, they owned 10 restaurants, fast food, noodle shops, Okay. And then they slowly experienced, you know, high staff attrition, shortage of labor, and they built a commissary. So for the restaurateurs, uh, for the folks who don't know the space, a commissary is like a communal kitchen. They produce all the food and then ship it out to the restaurant. So they did that, but it didn't alleviate the problem. So they're actually um, combined with aerospace engineers. So re restaurateurs, aerospace engineers got together and created this this autonomous machine that creates a whole bunch of different foods, which I'll describe in a second. But what, what's interesting is on a macro level is they're solving for major, major problems, right? There's staff turnover around the world for restaurants is at 75%. We know, especially in the U S labor costs are going up. There's tons of food waste, yeah. just food waste alone in the U S um, could feed about a quarter of the world's population food waste from restaurants alone. And about 3,000 people die a year. So, you know, when you think about restaurants that we experience or food that we get, we're kind of stuck back in the early days of the automotive world, right? Like the 1900s. It's still very manual focused, very repetitive. And what we're trying to do is make it much more automated, but still have served delicious food. So if you don't mind, let me just jump um, I've got a little bit of a presentation of the robot. It's much easier to describe that. Sure. To show it to you, if, if you don't mind. <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> Share screen, Chrome tab. And let me know if you get the audio um, on this. Did, did you click the little checkbox for include audio? I, I did. Okay. You, you tell me. Yep, I can hear it. Okay. Okay. So you can see RoboEats.com as the URL. Yeah, it sounds a little futuristic. This is not like you go up to a Best Buy and buy one of these things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would imagine not. It's a pretty specialized uh, device. Yeah. It is. and But when you think about the applications, why we're at CES is because we want to kind of introduce this sure. to the world. I mean, it's been in the works for about two years. Um, in the last nine months, being actually in prototype mode for testing the restaurant. We're going to open up a restaurant just to showcase it in about two weeks time. And now it's ready to scale. So we're, we're, we've got it ready to be deployed. And when you think about the applications, it's perfect for hospitals, business centers, schools, campuses, senior living center, it keeps on going, adding on. And especially if you're a QSR, you wanna retrofit your restaurant, it's a perfect spot um, to do this. Now, what makes it, okay, so what? 
so what is a robot kitchen replaces people and, <laughs> and does contamination control. It does a thousand different menu items. So everything from soup to pasta, to noodles, to bowls, to salad, you can put this in a stadium and serve wings, French fries, poutine. I'm a Canadian, so I got to mention poutine okay. um, in one, in one shot. It so the, you can do when breakfast. We, when we went up to Canada for a conference, it was the first thing we ordered. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you can do breakfast. I mean, so the versatility is there on, on this robot. So yeah. when we think about rolling this out, um, it, it, this is not for the, the, the home at the moment. Sure. It's too big. It's 200 square foot. But when you think about a local restaurant, that's that's a thousand square feet, just the kitchen alone. Mm-hmm. So 200 square feet kind of re- replaces that whole um, the whole kitchen section. Gotcha. So that that would improve the uh, the the profitable section of the restaurant because you could possibly put in a couple of extra seats in those spaces and yeah, exactly. Like and then sure. profitable, and then you know, it's there's no humans interacting with it, so there's no risk of cross contamination. It self cleans. It's actually the only robot um, out there that actually cleans itself. So you you, okay. you can go a thousand meals before refilling it. So it can literally sit in in an airport, serve a thousand different foods, and replenish every once in a while uh, as needed. Okay, and self-contained. Gotcha. And since since this is CES, uh, my mind yeah. immediately goes to Las Vegas. And uh, anybody oh. who's been there uh, knows that at the back of Planet Hollywood there is a uh, there's a bar that is a robot. It has two robotic bartenders. I can yeah. absolutely see this fitting right in with them. So you can order a drink and food and have the whole thing uh, be automated in front of you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Or like, you know, when you think about, you know, the Hooters Hotel, you, you know, you think about Hooters would be perfect because you don't have to. I mean, chicken is such a easy thing to get, get people get sick. But this right. has got sensors that knows exactly the temperature of the foods. One of my favorite parts is the app. This is the consumer portion that I get excited about is that you can actually go in once you have the Robo Eats app, you download it, you order the food. And of course, you know, you're 20 minutes out, you send the order in and it'll it'll detect how close you are and start preparing the meal. You can actually watch it. But the, the, the real money is the way the software is being built, how it all interacts, because all of a sudden you can say, you know what, I want double the chicken or I want to. I've got high blood pressure. I want to re- cut down on sodium. You can actually do that. Or I've got diabetes and I want to cut down on sugar. So you can actually do that with the app because it's a robot. It's taking orders sure. from you, the customer. Sure. And, and it's just, it's just, uh, adjusting, um, uh, a database entry and <laughs> going off of a different, I know, I, I know it, yeah. it sounds complicated. As long as you have the fundamental menu in place, you can, you can adjust it. So, a meal, let's say you're not as hungry and you want to have half a portion size because it's by weight. All of a sudden, it's kind of like going to Whole Foods. When you go to the salad bar, you put something down and it weighs it for you. It's the same philosophy. You could, standard meal calls $12, but if you want to eat a quarter, no problem. You can just reduce the amount of lettuce or kale or whatever the case may be. Okay. Interesting. So uh, yep. where, obviously you said it's several years in development you're you're doing some you're doing or just did some testing so where exactly are we in that deployment phase yeah so good, good question so the real deployment so um our r d is in latvia so if, for, for folks who know us, the eastern part of europe um so r d is there where and that's where the restaurant tours started from okay. with the aerospace engineer so they developed the robot we're going to open up the restaurant and then we're going to bring it to um We've already got a, a few deals in the works to bring it to uh, corporate campuses, oh. as well as um, airports. Corporate so campuses. It, that makes sense, too. Well, yeah, when you think of so when something works 24 hours, it's a huge advantage because if you're at, in a hospital, things close at like 8 p.m. or 9 right. p.m. and you're stuck with grab and go in corporate offices, the same kind of idea. So. You know, there, this is a huge advantage for giving fresh food delivered to what the customer or employee wants at that moment in time. Yeah, for sure. Fascinating. Uh, so if people want to find out more about this, how can they get that info? So RoboEats.com, R-O-B-O-E-A-T-Z.com. Very cool. 
Well, I appreciate you coming and talking to me about this because this is a fascinating product. That's awesome, man. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for all the guests out there. We really appreciate it. And hopefully next year we'll shake hands. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. (laughs) (laughs) All All right. right, Have a good rest of your CES. You too. Thank you. Yep. I hope you enjoyed that interview, and if you did, make sure you check out some of the more than 100 interviews we conducted during the virtual CES 2021 coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube, hit the notification bell to learn when we post new content and when we go live.